Hi there, Chris from Totally EV, and here doing a dedicated audio review of the MG5 EV, which has been updated, so we thought to do a separate video on it. Now, if you're interested in seeing the detailed review of the vehicle itself, do check it up on your pop banner down in the description below, or indeed in the pinned comments. Now, to kick off this video, we have to talk about its audio configuration, and here you've got six drivers with 3D audio sound, and that comes comprised within the SE and the Trophy long range as standard, with no option to upgrade. Therefore, here you have got speakers found within each of the four doors, and then you have got tweeters found within the A-pillars. Now, for you to tinker around with the audio drivers, you want to navigate on the 10.25-inch display, and here you will find a five-band equalizer, whereby we've taken three notches off 80 hertz, one notch off 500 hertz, and then added one notch to one kilohertz, five kilohertz, and 16 kilohertz. Of course, this is all very subjective, so make sure you share your own EQ settings if you have the MG5 EV down in the comments section below. Now we would like to point out that there is no virtual subwoofer option which was present on the old MG5 EV's infotainment system. This seems to have been enabled by default given our own EQ settings and experiences of it, but it's just something we thought to share. Elsewhere you've also got a loudness mode which we have enabled on the new MG5 EV. Now if you do want to connect up to the infotainment system you have got Bluetooth whereby the SBC and AAC codecs are supported only. But better still, you have got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay supported over a wired format, allowing for better quality playback. Although it's worth noting that we did experience quite a few issues with Android Auto connecting and disconnecting, but this could be a potentially isolated issue. Now, nonetheless, if you do want the highest quality playback, you'll want to add movie or indeed audio files to a USB, because here the MG5 EV's infotainment system does support USB playback. So moving swiftly on, we get onto cabin noise. And here, the numbers that were recorded by us using a sound meter will be on your screen. Now, for those who are subscribed, you'll realize that the figures at the lower speeds are actually pretty impressive. Although it's worth pointing out that here, the sound meter did not pick up the low-end resonance that was present at lower speeds, and therefore when traversing uneven terrain, or for example, while going over potholes or speed bumps. It is minimal, but just something we thought to highlight in comparison to some alternatives out there on the market. This is very much the same sort of case that could be said about the rest of MG's fully electric fleet. Now, as for the higher speeds, you do have a bit of noise that creeps in from the tyres and a little bit of wind that can be heard off the A-pillars, but it is quite minimal in the grander scheme of things, so therefore we've got no inherent complaints. So with all of that said and done, let's go on to an audio demo. We'll be placing the camera and the microphone in four separate locations and playing back a track. It's titled Like Me and it's sang by Priya J. Now, I appreciate an audio demo over YouTube is never ideal, so let me get onto my subjective opinion. Now, first off, in terms of the sub-bass tones, they are cut short, which is no surprise given the fact that there is an emission of a physical subwoofer unit. But on the flip side, you've got this virtual subwoofer, which seemingly has been enabled as standard on the new MG5 EV, as I did mention before. And as a result, you've got a little bit of extra oomph towards the sub-bass tones. On that note here, both the quantity and quality are done pretty good, both at the front and rear of the cabin, for the mid-bass tones. I actually reduced a few notches towards the EQ in order to reduce its mid-bass impact, but of course that is all very subjective, depending on how much of a bass head you'd consider yourself to be. Now as for the mids, they are pushed back and recessed. Now you could be quick to say you could have EQ'd it via the infotainment system, but doing so will add a little bit of inaccuracy through the mid-range tones, and therefore adding a little bit of an odd 
reverb as well. So in my case, I actually chose to go for more of a reference sound, all while accepting that there is somewhat of a V-shaped sound signature. As for the highs, they extend pretty well at the front of the cabin due to the inclusion of the dedicated tweeters found within the A-pillars, but at the rear of the cabin, it is lackluster. And of course, over here, you'll find that the sounds are coming more towards the front of the cabin and therefore doesn't give you the same sort of toe-tapping feeling. Now, equally, when it comes to its soundstage, it's a little bit lackluster due to having only four audio drivers at the front and two at the rear. Indeed, here, the overall width and depth just feels a little bit closed and the instrument separation could have been improved. With that said, the overall 3D audio processing isn't too shabby, and equally here you still get a good degree of engagement. Ultimately, what I'm trying to say over here is that the MG5 EV's audio system is neither bad nor is it great, and therefore will suffice for most consumers. As such, it gets our approved audio awards. Now I'd be curious to know what you make of the audio system down in the comment section below, and how you feel it compares to some of its competitors. Now, if you've liked this independent detail review and want to see more, definitely do consider dropping a like, subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all of which would be greatly appreciated. As such, I've been Chris from Totally EV and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.